every human being plans the large trajectory of their life. They plan the big uh, themes of their life between lifetimes. And we agree to come in as part of our soul's plan and to take on different challenges. We agree some lives are very short and this is appropriate. Some lives are much longer. My name is Andrea Khoury. So I had the extraordinary experience of waking up one morning and seeing a vision in front of me. And I saw myself and my husband walking on a snowy sidewalk. I saw that there was a car that came from behind. I saw the color of the car. I saw the make of the car. And I actually saw that this car hit us. And I heard my husband speak. I heard the words that he screamed. Now, all of this was at seven o'clock in the morning. And I then just started my day and forgot about this vision until that night. It was 10 o'clock at night and we were leaving a house where we had had a reception. There were many people in this house and we left at 10 o'clock. And as we were walking down the sidewalk, I never saw the car, but I felt the impact when it hit us. And as I was flying down the road, I heard my husband scream the exact words that I had heard at seven o'clock that morning. And I realized right away in that split second that this was an example of how time was elastic, how you could see at 7 a.m. something that only happened 15 hours later. And I knew that I had been prepared and warned and that I shouldn't be afraid. And so I uh, was very badly hit. I came out of my body and this was the first experience, not the last though, but it was the first experience of really coming out of my body and understanding that my consciousness and who I am was totally not that body that was flat on the, the ground in the middle of the street. And I looked down at that body and I knew it was familiar, but yet there I was about nine feet above with all my thoughts and my emotions and my feelings. And then I saw the chaos because here we were husband and wife hit by a car. We had three little children and there was a big party going on. So everybody started coming out of the house and there was a huge snowstorm. And I remember feeling very concerned because nobody put a coat on. They were all in a panic and they came out onto the street. But it was a very bad snowstorm that night. And the ambulance came and it was chaotic all around. And I was trying to talk to people and nobody could hear me. And I finally basically gave up on that scene and I decided that I was just going to move away from that scene. It became frustrating. There was, I was no way I could communicate with anybody. And then as I began to lift up, I felt this magnificent heat and love and sun and light come around me and envelop me and just move me away from that scene. And then it didn't matter anymore. And I basically floated away into another dimension until this beautiful being of light was standing in front of me and he addressed me by name. And this part always gets me because I was so shocked that he knew my name. I thought, who am I? You know, I'm so small. I'm nothing. How can he know my name? And he knew my name and he said, Andrea. And I was like, oh, yeah. but I knew he was loving and kind, but he was so majestic. I never saw a face, but he said, do you want to stay or do you want to go back? And I had three little children, one, three and five. And I said, I must go back. Even if every bone is broken, I must go back. And then he asked me again, do you want to stay or do you want to go? And I gave the same answer. And then I was thrown into this vortex. And I remember it 
perfectly to this day. You know the thing about a near-death experience? You never forget one detail. You just never forget it. And I was thrown into this vortex and I was using my hands and my feet to keep myself in this incredible whirling mass of light. And yet it wasn't a physical body, but it was my astral body. And I felt like I was in a body and I was using my hands and my feet. And I knew that I had to stay in this whirling whirlpool of energy. And then it just took me back into my body and I woke up. But I would say the most extraordinary experience began when my daughter passed away in 2016. So Chloe had cancer. I took care of her the last year of her life. And uh, it was um, on the last night of her life, she was in the hospital and I was sleeping in a chair in the hospital. And then at one point I woke up. I woke up and I felt a, like a tsunami of joy. It was like I was hit in the middle of the chest by this incredible joyful feeling. And I woke up and I knew it was done. And then I went back to her bedside. And this was a very difficult moment because you have to compute and realize that yes, that's just the body. And because I had the near death experience, I was, I was much calmer probably than I would have been otherwise. And right away, Chloe was beside me right away. And she said, Mom, thank you for being so calm. It helps me to let go. And then I started talking with Chloe. And uh, you know what she said to me? This is a really beautiful thing. I learned a lot from, from talking to Chloe. I learned a lot about what happens on the other side. I learned a lot about what it's like to, to function without a physical body. I learned a lot about actually like that's home. This is a little satellite journey that we're on for a very short period of time. But home is when we are not in the body. And it's so beautiful and magnificent that if we really understood and knew more about it, if we didn't forget the way we actually are programmed to forget, we wouldn't want to stay here. We would want to go home because it's tough being on the human plane. It's tough being in a body. It's hard when you're a good, kind, loving person who's just filled with gratitude to see all the 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 way the 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 way the human beings treat each other makes you not want to be part of all that but we're here and we're here for a reason and i know that i am here to bring in the light and i know i wake up every morning and i say what can i do today to honor chloe and to bring more love into the world and that is the mission that I have. Every human being plans the large trajectory of their life. They plan the big uh, themes of their life between lifetimes. And we agree to come in as part of our soul's plan and to take on different challenges. We agree some lives are very short and this is appropriate. Some lives are much longer. Some lives have actually in all of our lives, we have the opportunity to have different exit points. And we may choose to take an earlier exit point or we may choose not to leave them because there's more to accomplish and to stay longer in human form. But every soul comes in with a plan and every life is of the appropriate length and all the hardships, they're lessons. And if you dig and dig deeper and deeper as you're living these lessons, you can take this pain and you can turn it into learning. You can become much more of 
a witness to your life instead of seeing it as, oh, poor me. There are so much to learn in hardship. And then we come into human embodiment to live that plan. Now, you would think that we would choose only a beautiful, easy life. And you know, some people, it is appropriate and they do choose an easy life. But for most of us, we choose a life that will help us learn the most lessons that we can learn so that we can advance our soul. And this is how we learn. There is a metaphor that a diamond is created from pressure. If there's no pressure, then there's no diamond. And it's the same thing with a human being. We need to have uh, situations that help us grow. And we grow when we are challenged. We grow when we face hardship. And we can choose. We may choose not to grow. We may forget completely our soul's plan. We forget completely that we have this team also to help us. But the fact is we do. And so we come in and we start to live these really difficult situations and we forget we forget that this is all just like a play. It's like we are all players on a stage. And today I'm wearing this uh, costume. And uh, even when I see like a priest or anybody, I think to myself, this is the costume that they are wearing for the role that they are playing. And that's what it is. If we can take a little step back, we realize this is all a play to help us learn. Sometimes people ask me, why can't I remember my previous lifetimes? Why do I come in here with such amnesia and I forget? I forget that I've actually made a plan. I forget the relationships that we have agreed to beforehand. And the answer is that you need to forget. Because if you were remembering your past lives, you would not be able to fully live in this one. And it's the present moment that matters. It's really, you know, there's an expression that says life is a master class. And it's true. It's difficult being in a body. And it's difficult going through so much hardship and, and just on a personal level with relationships and disease and wars and, but they're there to help us learn. And when we look around and we see that human beings are still killing other human beings, people are still hurting other people. We have not learned. We have not learned enough. And so the challenge for some of us that see this and know that this is um, basically a school is to stay in the light. And it's a tough challenge. It's really not easy. It means that you have to distance yourself from all the chaos and stay in the light. I believe my daughter said it actually uh, after she passed and she said mom all is as it should be and this is a difficult thing for a parent to hear and to accept uh, when they lose a child and this is a difficult thing for someone to accept uh, if they are living with great hardship how can you accept that all is as it should be but if you take a different stand, one thing you control, you may not control the world outside of you, but you control your thoughts. You control your own thinking. And this is where it begins. This is where your healing begins, is what goes on inside of you. And that's why the work that I do is work to help people raise their own vibration and just feel better, feel more peace, feel more well-being, lighter, calmer, sleep better. 
and I do this with sound. I do it with my voice and I do it with different instruments as well. I do it with music and I just wanted to give you a short sample of one instrument, just one. This is, this is a quartz crystal bowl and the idea when you hear this vibration it has extraordinary properties crystal when you hear this vibration normally we would do a little uh, preparation for sound meditation we would do some breathing and we would do a prayer and but we're just going to listen to the vibration but just just listen to it and just follow it and breathe in the vibration here we go I'm in Canada and it doesn't matter. You could be on the moon because it's energy and vibration and this carries. And one thing I learned is that we vibrate. Our structure of ourselves is very much like this crystal. And so when you listen to the sound and you breathe it in and breathe it out, it changes the way you feel. Two seconds. Imagine one hour of sound. So I invite all of you to join me because I do sound every Wednesday at one o'clock and everyone is welcome and it's on Zoom. When you do meditation with sound, you learn to get very still and it quiets the mind. When you meditate, in silence it's more difficult to quiet the mind the mind goes all over but when you have an instrument and i say follow the sound follow the sound and then you do that's it and you breathe it in and you breathe it out begin to feel as if you're bringing space into your mind, into your thoughts, and peace begins to take over, less stress, less anxiety, less worry, less fear, and more peace. Thank you. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for listening to my story. And I send you all much love and uh, that's it.